So some of you may recognize this. It's a self-centering doweling jig. And this is an original dowlet version from probably 1970 something, I'm imagining. It was given to me by a friend who never used it and I found it quite useful in the shop. Now, I never make projects entirely with dowel joinery. Usually I'm using mortise and tenon joinery and then I complement that with a dowel here or there. But in that capacity, it's a very useful jig. Now, the idea with this is it's supposed to be self-centering. You twist the screw and the plates move outward or inward in a uniform fashion so that your holes are always centered right on your workpiece. In a recent project I'm doing for popular woodworking, I found that my jig actually wasn't centering on the thickness of the stock. And so we're gonna go about fixing that today. All you need is a micrometer, an eight millimeter wrench, and just a little bit of patience and we'll get that fixed. Okay, so we'll install the dowlet jig on this board and clamp it in tightly. Do confirm that the aluminum fences of the jig are tight up against the workpiece on both the front and back of the jig. If something's bent on your jig, uh, recalibration certainly won't fix that. But for most people, I think it's this basic recalibration that's out of whack when your jig is not self-centering. And the, the measurement to take is comparing this space on the left and right. And so we're getting 0.250 quarter inch on this side. And on this side, we're getting 0.276. So there's quite a difference. Visually, that's what it looked like. It was about uh, a 16th or better off of center on our workpiece. So uh, what we're gonna do is we'll take this off and take a look at the anatomy of the jig here. This is on the side opposite your thumb screw. If you look at the back of it, you've got two eight millimeter bolts here that keep this plate from rotating. And this is basically your adjustment screw. And it's, it's thin, it's not really like a nut, it's more like a, a plate. If you loosen those screws, make a fine adjustment what I'm going to do is partially loosen these and then tap the little notch in this plate and we'll make fine adjustments and recheck. And we'll retighten it. Another small adjustment. We'll do our standard check again, 254, 266. Still need to adjust. And once you get close, I would say go ahead and fully tighten the bolts down uh, because without doing that, you're really not going to see how the jig is actually going to be in use. 269, 269, perfect. Right there, that's dead on the money. Just gonna make sure that we're good and snug on these bolts and we'll put this jig back into service. Yeah, and when you drill a hole and flip the jig around, you can feel it drops right down into the same hole here it stops short, we have no drilled hole. Here, without any resistance, it just plunks right down into the same hole. So, perfect alignment there. Of course, if you take the time when you're laying out the dowels for your project, if you always drill with the same reference of the jig facing the same side of your work pieces, alignment is not so critical. But if you do take the time to dial in this adjustment on your doweling jig, there won't be any surprises. Even if you happen to get a workpiece or the jig reversed somewhere in your project, things will still fit together just right. So that was pretty good. We were able to resurrect a tool with just a simple adjustment, and it's always nice when you can save an antique tool. I was rifling through the paperwork that came in this original antique box and found that the Dowlett Company was out of Hastings, Michigan, 
If anybody knows some interesting anecdotes about this company or has some living history they'd like to share, feel free to drop me a line in the comment section. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.